All right. What's up, everybody? This is Jim here on YouTube. Anyways, since I'm pretty much bored after finishing school not too long ago, I figured I'd do something just a little random on here. And yeah, I know everybody is feeling the same way. They're bored and, and stuff like that. And I hope y'all are all okay from this pandemic. So anyways, I just figured I'd do like a, a little overview of this door interlock type right here. Which is made by ECI. Which mostly you find these types of interlocks on a Schindler elevator. But it also could be used on any elevator as well. I've seen I've seen this type of interlock on a ThyssenKrupp Isis elevator that used to be there. This is the most common type of interlock you mostly find on a Schindler elevator. With this type of fixture that I showed you in the previous couple of videos I did for BC's Vader's birthday. See these two metal pins that you see right there are the switches which keeps the hoistway door shut so when the elevator car is not present the door will not open. It'll do this if you try to pull it open. See? It only does this. See? That means that it is locked with this latch right there. Now, the way how this opens is basically this latch hammer shoots up like this. And you see the switch is now moved, which means that the elevator car cannot move because you can now slide the door open. And now that the latch flips down, now if you let go, the door will do this. See, it'll close right back up, just like what you see on an installation. So anyways, this right here is the latch hammer that is engaged onto this interlock right here. Now looking again at those two metal pins, you see that they're pushed in a big pressure by the door latch. Now, once this door latch lifts up, you see, you see those two metal pins move? That means it's unlocked. Now, when it's locked, that means the elevator can move. When it's unlocked, the elevator car stops at a very abrupt speed, which means it does this. The car just stops suddenly. It does not level, it does not gently stop, it just stops abruptly. So that's why when you lift this latch, you see that switch comes out, which causes the car to stop. And when it's locked, the car continues in motion. Now you see this hole right there on the latch arm. Basically this bolts a screw onto a vertical rod, which holds onto a door roller attached onto the hoistway door, which it does not move. This other roller, which moves, is attached onto the door latch, which means the door roller that moves is attached onto this rod, which looks something like this. Yeah, I know it's not the exact format. This is a half moon key, but this is basically what you see on an elevator install. And that is basically how you open the door. Lift up on this latch, door opens, and if you let go of the latch but hold the door, it just props back down. See, it's spring-loaded. Just like how the door is, the hoister door is spring-loaded, and same said with the latch. See, now if you let go of the door, it just shuts back up. And you will not be able to open the door until you lift up on that latch, and that unlocks the door. Now to close it, see? Now it's shut. Now do keep this in mind, and this is something I kind of wanted to point out that I prefer. Try not to let the door slam because, for one, it'll probably cause damage to the door interlock device, and two, people from outside the elevator hallway can probably hear it and may get startled without expecting it. Because the thing about spring-loaded hoistway doors is that they have this roller above the interlock on a track held by a rubber strap. So that is what makes the hoistway door spring-loaded. 
So yeah, that's just a warning when closing the elevator hoistoid door. Close it gently because some spring-loaded doors can slam really, really easily. All right, now looking down right there, that's the model form right there. You just pause the video if you want to read that right now. And yeah, I did place a Schindler MT button on top of it. Yeah, I know it's funny. But anyways, you see right there, this right here is the date when it was installed. This 01 indicating that it's January and this 98 indicates the year it was put in, which 98 means 1998 and then this 01 means January. So this interlock was made in January of 1998. And this interlock is actually made in Canada. And this right here is your ECI symbol right there. It looks like this interlock was made by 1995. I think a little bit more older than that, but I really don't know for sure. But yeah, there's your labeling right there. If you want to continue reading, just pause the video now if you want to do so. And this is what the opposite side looks like. Basically, this is supposed to be the front because this is the type of interlock you see on a real installation. Like if you have an elevator that is installed, usually you see it like this, you see? This is what you basically see on a real elevator installation. It's just like that. And basically if you have an interlock failure, such as the interlock isn't working right, what you basically do is just take a screwdriver and just unscrew these nuts out and this plate will come off. And this is the stuff that you see behind it. But in my case, where I'm showing it in my collection, I prefer to have it this way because since I have an elevator display, I wanted to show off this switch right here. See? I wanted to show off the workings of the interlock right there. Just simple as it is. So that basically is your overview of how this ECI door interlock works. Um, I've actually seen some similar types that is not made by ECI, but this is basically the only one type that I know of. Yes, I mean, sure, there are some different types of interlocks other than this one, such as an older one. So that'll basically do it for this video. Hope everybody is entertained by this. I don't usually do random videos like this, but I figure that this should be a fun Friday enjoyment. So hope everybody stays safe. Enjoy your weekend, and with all that said, that'll conclude the video once I close the door back up. So, I'm going to say now is, that's it.